Hey everybody! In the last days, I was browsing through our kids' board games to get new ideas for simple and educational games to build for the Your Path for Kids video series. And I ran into this one, Puzzle Sums. I would have shown you the original game, but right now we are in the middle of moving to a new apartment, and this game is apparently packed already with other games in a big box that is in the middle of another bigger pile of boxes. But anyways, the idea of the game is to match two pieces of a puzzle, one of them having two numbers and a plus or a minus, and the other one having the result. And in today's video, we will build the logic for this game in our bot and have the bot solve this puzzle. In our puzzle sum game, we will get a list of pairs of numbers and an operation for them. And I've already predefined some activities here, just to have the data we will play with already defined. I have a list of sums, and in the values here we have a new list of string, and then we have three strings. And we have here the first number, the operation, and the second number. And the idea is to match these sums or subtractions from the second list or the second piece of the puzzle, which is the list of results. And as values, I have here 7, 3, and 5, which are the results of the first three operations. And the idea is to match the numbers and operation with the result and save them in the dictionary of solutions, where we'll have, for example, as key, the numbers and operation between them, and as value the result. So how do we do that? We have to identify, first of all, from these strings here, which are the numbers, and what is the actual operation. Is it plus or minus? So we have to parse or to loop through this list here. And we've done that in the last videos already many times now. We know we can use the for each loop, we will parse the list of sums, so the first list, and then we have to basically split this string here in the middle and get the first number, second number, and also identify the operation. And for that we have a function called just like that split. So we can just write here assign. Here we can say um, our item, then to string, and then we can say split. And then inside here we have to specify what is the um, character or the string of characters by which we want to split the string, and we have to specify it in curly brackets and inside the curly brackets we can say quotation mark plus quotation mark for example so we want to split it by the plus sign let's make it bigger and then we can also specify the um, string split options as none we will not go into these details, what it means, and in the end we have to, or we can create then a list with the different elements after the split. So we can say point to list. All right, and this is our expression here. On this side, we can create a new variable. We can call it um, list underscore maybe factors, and this list has to be a list of strings here. So this one over here, 
list and object should be string. All right, our error is gone now. And then we have to actually sum up the two factors and compare them with every possible result in the list of results. And if we find a match, if the two pieces of the puzzle go together, then we add them in this dictionary of solution. If we find no match, then we don't do anything. So we have to then loop through this second list of results and check if we find the right result for the operation. So for that, we can use another for each loop. And we have here, um, we can call this uh, differently just to avoid confusion with the first item. We say maybe number and we loop through this list of results. And here we have an if condition because we want to compare the two numbers, the one from the list of results and adding or subtracting the two factors of the operation. And we can do that in various ways. Let's first add up the two numbers. So we have list factors on the first position, which is number zero. And we have to add it up with the list factors on the first position. And this would be strings that are resulting after the split operation. So we have to convert them to numbers to be able to add them up. So convert 2 in 32. And we do the same for the second factor. And now we have to make everything a string because we have two numbers right now. So we say here to string. And then we can check if they're equal. So we have the function equals. And we put here our number from the list of results. So we will be looping through each element of the list of results and comparing our sum here with that number. And if there is a match, then we can assign that elements to the dictionary of results. So we use a sign activity. We have here the dict solution and we have here the item to string. So this would be the key, our item to string. So the key will be the item, the current element from the list of sums. So actually for the first one, it would be two plus five. And then as the value, we will have our number to string because our dict solution is a dictionary of type string for the key and string for the value as well. And that's fine, but we have covered until now only the case of summing up because um, if we check our example here, we have also the option to subtract. So how do we deal with that? We could have another if and decide between plus or minus. Or we can use something that we have learned in the previous episode, which is try catch. We can try to split it by plus. If it finds a plus, it will split it. Or we can try then to split by minus. So a way to do it is minimize this first, use a try catch activity right here in the body, then move this splitting operation and this for each loop inside a try and then for a catch just use the most generic type of exception the system one hit under and then here in the exception we can use the same actually the same sequence and with just a few modifications we can finish this branch as well we will split by a minus not by a plus and here in the for each loop we would subtract them rather than add them. And everything else will stay the same. So we have very quickly dealt with the second case of subtracting the two numbers. 
And what we still have to do at the end, after this for each, is just to display the results. So display the dictionary. We can use a log message in the beginning with um, simple text here. We say the dictionary values are. And then we can use another for loop to loop through the dictionary and just display the values, the key and the value. So we say for each item in dict solution, we use a log message activity where we can say item to string. And that should be it. We can run this now. So it has run already and we see the result, the dictionary values are, it has found the match for all three of them. So 2 plus 5 equals 7, 6 minus 3 equals 3, and 4 plus 1 equals 5. So we have seen how we can compare or first of all split these strings here, understand which ones are the numbers, what is the operation. We have seen how we can deal with the operation um, using the try-catch activity trying to split by plus. If it doesn't work, it must be minus. We split by minus. And then comparing the results with the ones from the second list, saving everything up in the dictionary, and at the end, displaying the results. And that was it. We have learned how to solve the puzzle sums game. First, we looked through the list of numbers and the operations between them. Then we have interpreted these strings and understood the numbers and the operation between them, either add or subtract. Then we have calculated the results and matched them with the ones from the list of results and saved the solution in a dictionary. If you like this video, please hit the like button. This will tell YouTube that this video is worth sharing with others. And spread the word among your friends about what you're learning here. Stay curious and see you next time.